Toy Chat is not a children's channel. This video is intended for adult gift givers and collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Fang. And this is another episode of Collector's Corner, our podcast where we discuss hot topics in the doll and toy industry centered around some of our favorite brands. So although most of the time we use this podcast as an opportunity to jump on, you know, really of the moment hot topics like leaks and, you know, doll and toy news and stuff like that. It's also kind of an opportunity for us to discuss subjects and have conversations that we maybe ordinarily wouldn't in our standard videos. So we recently hosted a poll on our YouTube channel and asked you guys uh, what you wanted us to discuss in the next episode. Uh, and over 300 of you voted. So thank you for voting. We appreciate it. And the winner of the poll was Collector Struggles of managing storage, downsizing, and letting go. So that is going to be the subject of today's conversation. And you know, it's funny. I feel like dealing with space and display and storage is top of mind or like it has to be for a lot of collectors, but I feel like it's also something that no collector wants to be concerned about <laughs> or yeah. having to deal with. And I mean, honestly, over the years, like Sang and I have multiple times, like yeah, people have asked on, you know, our socials and our channel, like, can you guys give us like a tour of like, you know, your what what you have on display and mm -hmm. how you display your IT dolls or how you display your Ever After High or your Rainbow High? And <laughs> that's complicated. It is complicated. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm in the process of um, re reorganizing in uh, restructuring my room. So most of my collection is in my room. So maybe eventually I'll do a tour, maybe in a month or so. So, I mean, that's something hopefully I can figure out soon. But I think our kind of um, collecting styles are a little different. Um, Max, yeah. you, you personally like to display what you're mostly interested in the moment. So most of your yes. stuff are out on display. You don't keep things in box, generally speaking. Um, certain things. It depends on, to give you guys a bit of background context as well, and just, you know, a little bit of insight into like our personal lives. And, you know, for me, I am not currently in a living situation where I have an ample amount of space to display everything I have. And obviously I think that's something a lot of collectors want or, you know, might aspire to have. Um, so yeah, what I currently do is I basically have one large wooden shelf, which is like 100% a dedicated doll shelf. Um, and because I have pretty large doll collections, I rotate out basically what is on display there versus like what's in storage. And that's something maybe Sang and I will, Sang and I will get into later is like, yeah, we do have a shared storage unit um, for kind of like excess stuff. So yeah, currently because of, of course, yeah, my main play line focus right now is Rainbow High. So I predominantly have um, pretty much, yeah, my entire Rainbow High collection is on display in that shelf. And I do also have the Rainbow High house in my bedroom right now, which I really don't know if that's the most practical use of the space that I have. So whether or not that's going to stay there indefinitely is a really big question mark. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of where things are at in, you know, in terms of current display. I mean, I think specifically with IT dolls, and I mean, really, if we start talking about like high end, you know, very expensive collectibles in general, that becomes a little bit of a different conversation because at least for me, I don't mind displaying like playline stuff and like figures and things that didn't cost a lot of money, you know, on open shelving or on my TV stand or wherever. But I think when you're talking about something that's very expensive, I have purchased um, glass cases specifically for things like Integrity Toys and Hot Toys. Um, I unfortunately don't have the space to have that built currently you have a glass case but is it is it currently it's not it was filled with it stuff right now again i'm in transition of moving things so all my it stuff are back in their boxes but ideally once i move stuff around um yeah there that's that's gonna be for my it dolls 
But yeah, yeah with IT dolls, um, and generally speaking, since they're so high end, um, you I prefer keeping them behind protective glass. You want something like enclosed. Yeah. I well, just like. dust. I yeah. Mean, you know, I live on a busy street, um, so there's just a lot of dust flying around. Um, that just collects in my room. Oh, dust is. I, I, Dust is one of the things that drives me insane. Fun fact, my Rainbow High shelf actually currently has a very large sheet over it. Because I work from home and I don't want like a whole bunch of like dolls in the background of meetings, but I, it actually kind of has a handy dual usefulness of protecting those dolls mm -hmm. from dust because dust is yeah dust is rough mm -hmm. like w open shelving and it just collects so quickly and gets so excessive um that's true yeah i mean i bought a bunch of like the billy book case from ikea um and you can buy a little attachment doors for it so there's these glass doors you can buy on top of just the billy book case which is like a normal bookcase Mm -hmm. Um, so you can actually build like a glass, you can make in, you can make it into a glass case if you want to. I bought those, so that's going to be set up for my IT dolls. Yeah. And then, you know, with expensive dolls, we, we live in an area where we do potentially have earthquakes. Yeah. So IT dolls toppling over since they're heavy and they can be also kind of fragile at the same time. Like I had dolls break before, so you want them protected behind something that if they do take a tumble and those stands are not very protective either mm. it's very stable so yeah you want to be able to protect those dolls yeah that's look at like i said earlier my outlook on the really high-end expensive stuff is is it's better to display them in something that's literally enclosed so it's like they won't just fall onto like the floor you know um there's also obviously with stuff like it dolls and, and a lot of other like expensive collectibles there some of the pieces are very small mm -hmm. um like even smaller than playline accessories yeah. and pieces so it's like you really do not want to lose those um so that's why for me we a lot of our it collection um i'm like unless i have some like the glass case set up and ready to go um i keep them in their original packaging in the boxes which sang and i both have stacks yeah. <laughs> of it boxes in our closets and mm -hmm. just wherever they fit yeah my my closet my my closet is completely full of it and yes and there's still a bunch in boxes like yeah. like moving boxes as well but ideally yeah i mean we can talk about it later on about like downsizing but yeah definitely I want to have a manageable IT collection, even though they fit so nicely in those little boxes and you can forget about them. Um, yeah, it, they do eventually add up in terms of space. Yes. I mean, I think in general, when you're talking about like being an out of box versus in box collector, I mean, there's kind of like tiers of that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, I mean, the nice thing about IT is you can obviously open an IT doll and then put it back almost exactly the way it was when you first received it in the packaging so that's mm -hmm. really nice and i think when you have something delicate and expensive um you maybe want to return it to its original packaging because you know of course it's protected there and that's kind of the mindset we have with a lot of the disney limited edition dolls and you know hot toys and things like that that we do have pretty much remain in their boxes um up until you're at a point where you have you know a living situation or a personal space where you're able to you know kind of display everything um and yeah we're pretty much managing the best we can with mm -hmm. what we have and that's pretty much i'm sure what any collector does yeah. um i'm also the time a type of, i'm also the type of collectors who don't like to display everything i own yeah yeah i mean i'm more of an inbox collector so a lot of my stuff are in boxes and you've you, kind of become that yeah at this, yeah at this point I, I do yeah. i mean even with rainbow high which you know is kind of our mainstay um, a lot of mm -hmm. mine are in boxes just because mm -hmm. the, the ones where we, we tend to review are maxes and then i just yeah. never find the time to do it um but yeah i just i've seen some beautiful collections of people just you know gorgeous everything on display color-coded whatever by brand um and i am envious of the people who have that space um I, <laughs> it's for me, not everyone it's gorgeous <laughs> yeah. I, it's like yeah. i'm walking through a museum but that's that for to me that's not what i want what it's I an want aesthetic for my, it it's an, an aesthetic, aesthetic preference yes. for sure yeah, yeah there's some people who say especially if you're an inbox collector it looks like you're walking through a store <laughs> yeah yeah and, yeah you know it's for me that's just overwhelming to me i, I just like to have certain things that i'm currently interested in yeah. and then i'll swap it out when i i feel like changing it up i just don't yeah. want to have everything out for me personally and you know i don't you don't have to agree with it i think it's it's just overwhelming 
especially in a small space. Yeah. And I just one tumble, everything falls over. Um, yeah. So I like, I like curated stuff. You know, I, I like things. I like you know, like the, the small area over here is styled a certain way with a certain theme, and people change it up. Um, that's that's something that. I feel like is a really big struggle for me and definitely let me know if any of y'all feel the same. I am not the most skilled at really optimizing the space that I have. Um, I think it's really hard, especially if you have a really limited amount of space and like a large collection. Um, because I mean, you can work wonders by honestly, like just feng shuiing like the space that you have. Mm -hmm. You can do some really impressive things. But it's hard, especially because, of course, if you're a collector of a lot of different types of, like, brands and different dolls and different toys and so many things that are, like, different sizes and shapes. And that's exactly why when I'm collecting a brand, I really appreciate it when a given line makes a point to be, like, the packaging is uniform, like, the stands are uniform, da, da, da. So it makes it a lot easier as a collector to just deal with it um i mean that's been a little bit challenging i mean luckily a lot of it integrity toys boxes like are the similar sizes by lines but there's been a, some you know weird cases where it makes it like more challenging to make everything uniform um but yeah i mean that's pretty much where i'm at too is yeah kind of like saying said like curating very specific things i very recently kind of like tidied up i my tv stand space is more of like a gaming area for me so that now is more of like a dedicated um for my pokemon figures and little action figures and my games um and which speaking of which actually something i've recently like picked up um command brand display ledges do kind of come into clutch if you're trying to display like single small lightweight items in your collection i think you know they're they're advertised as being used for like little knickknacks and clocks and stuff like that but they work great for like small figures and remints and mini dolls and um so i've set some of those up and those can kind of come in handy if you want like a little bit of extra you know quote unquote shelving and display space but you don't necessarily want to invest in anything, in anything crazy yeah and yeah it's it's good to utilize vertical s space as well i know like shelving and oh my God, stuff yes are you know like you like like hanging shelves are really nice as well um yeah. just the space tend not to be you use and that's you know. i mean that's the one thing and i'm honestly i'm really bad about that but i feel like that's something that's really important as a collector is to be mindful of your horizontal versus vertical space where obviously it's like i've been at points where i'm like maybe i shouldn't be storing short small figures in this tall shelf that yeah. would be better suited for dolls or vice versa mm -hmm. or whatever um so yeah it, it takes i mean it's a lot of trial and error to you sometimes you have to move your collection around you have to you know do this and that which I mean, that can kind of segue us into specifically storage. And like when we say storage, we mean like things that you stow away, like yeah. things that you don't have, you know, overtly like directly displayed, but that you have packed up in a box and mm -hmm. whether it's in your closet or in some kind of personal space or a storage unit, which Sang and I have some experience with storage units. Mm -hmm. um, we currently share a storage unit. Um, something I'm going to say right off the bat is if you're venturing into, you know, a storage unit as a possibility or something you're considering, and I know obviously that's not something every collector can do. It can get very expensive. It's not practical for some people. I highly, highly, highly recommend shop around for your options. Um, don't look at something that's close to you and convenient and then just immediately pull the trigger and assume that that's what you have to do. We are saving like a shocking amount of money by by shopping mm -hmm. around for, you know, different options. Um, location, location, location is so accurate, obviously, you know, when it comes to homes and houses and rent prices, but it, it really applies to storage as well. So, you know, try try checking out areas that are less populated, that are less super high traffic. Um, and just see what your options are. It's of course going to be really important to to consider like how much space you think you'll need um, for items that you're going to store. Um, and we can kind of talk a little bit about how we store our stuff because that was one of my first like worries when we, when we you know especially if you're putting away anything that's really important to you is you're like is this going to be safe mm -hmm. in a box <laughs> for like question mark amount of time yeah i mean i definitely like really expensive stuff you shouldn't tuck away in storage and just forget about it and you know honestly 
it's so easy to just tuck something away in storage and just forget about it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you forget you have it. Like it, it, it comes, it becomes like an expense, just like yeah. keeping those things where like you, you don't really even like notice stored away. Yeah. Um, like, oh yeah, I bought this like a thousand years ago. Um, and you know, you know, it's segue into like, if you don't want to invest into a storage unit or a storage unit, or you're not at that step yet, um, I found that it's very easy to tuck things away underneath your bed, if possible. Um, mm -hmm. My bed frame doesn't doesn't have enough room to allocate for things stored underneath it, but I did buy some like um, risers for my bed, and so I was able to tuck a lot of stuff underneath. You know, I have long tubs. Um, that I I filled up with my, my with see my that's how you do it that's how you do yes. it because I would be I would be worried about like loose stuff but no if tubs that's and honestly actually mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. I would say avoid loose clutter when yeah. it comes to storage in general and I mean that can be difficult as a collector but um, anything in tubs is always better for storage for sure so yeah. I would say try to avoid and this is something we're still working on like tidying it up too but you know it's way better to avoid things like even things like open bags and like just mm -hmm. loose items um you know if you can fit things into tubs and uniform size boxes and stuff like that it's much better in the long run um yeah yeah like you know i have all my monster high dolls my gen one in long tubs that are underneath my bed now um so you have i have access to it and you know it's not somewhere i i would totally forget about them we we individually bag um most of our dolls well i mean but... older monster high dolls they have glue in their heads to hold so like protect... seepage. Oh my God, yeah, yeah so yeah we have we're back we bag them into um in little like ziploc bags um and also the quart and gallon at target they're pretty cheap too yeah you know? they're really cheap um also just when you are storing stuff you should be more mindful about like paint like uh, things that are painted like if you if you store them next to vinyls they tend to rub off um some of the dolls like accessories you know want to double bag them because yeah they can they can stain hair and faces if you don't store them correctly i don't really know if is there some kind of method of like identifying if there's like a dyed fabric anything on, dark colored probably yeah. anything dark colored or really bright colored this is a is a it's a pretty significant issue for integrity toys but i you know because there are definitely dyed fabrics there um if for some reason you need to stow away something like that um yeah definitely bag it do not put those fabrics or anything potentially dyed next to another doll another a different object because yeah staining is really no fun mm -hmm. um yeah if you have any concern or any any just chance of it happening you might as well just prevent it from happening by storing it separately i mean i think you can definitely have a sense you know of like kind of organization and tidiness in storage as well labeling everything you know making sure like oh like this is all within this line or this brand or whatever kind of to a point that was mentioned earlier i do have a bit of a rule for myself where anything extremely high value like the really high-end collectibles and stuff like that i do everything i can to avoid ever putting those like in storage or in a storage unit um because it just you know it feels like too much of a risk for me and obviously you know like nice collectibles and collectibles in general of course um in many aspects can, are can be like an investment yeah. so you know it's like you want to protect your collectibles you want to you know and then of course you know obviously you know the personal investment as well and your own attachment to all this stuff you know we'll get we'll get deeper into that as well but i think definitely one of the hardest things <laughs> to think about um in the realm of this discussion um is letting go of things is you know when it's time to just sell something donate something you know give it just just give it give it away get rid of it you know i'm assuming pretty much everyone listening to this is going to be like a collector but you know i feel like if you're not a collector you don't understand kind of the emotions that come behind like that conversation and and that 
decision and you know it can be really 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 hard you know to let go of of certain things or anything you know i mean especially when you're talking about like should i or do i want to downsize some portion of my collection and i mean this is something that's you know kind of um come up for me recently because i'm seeing some other some you know a few of our friends and people on instagram and stuff like that who are downsizing like pieces of their collection and of course obviously a lot of collectors do this kind of offload a, a chunk of some collection to make room for more of a new collection or you know something something different because I think as much as almost every collector would love infinite space and to never have to worry about space or anything like that I know it's just it's a crummy uncomfortable subject I don't like thinking about it I don't like ta talking about it saying and I have been avoiding this conversation on our channel for a very long time but I mean we both did like a little bit of downsizing recently not with dolls but really more so with our Funko Pop collections yeah. um I let go of like several dozen Funko Pops recently and um you know I feel like the whole the the Marie Kondo mm -hmm. approach does have a lot of truth behind it, even though I'm sure a lot of collectors would be like, all of this sparks joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you're looking at something and it really it it doesn't necessarily mean anything to you anymore, or it doesn't spark some sort of you know response in you when you see it or when you touch it mm -hmm. it's possible that it may be time you know to let it go there's other factors too of course oh, but yeah. and you um, know if you if you tucked it underneath your bed or in storage for years and you haven't thought about it mm -hmm. it, it might be time to let let it go yeah yeah so you know and 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 yeah i mean there's other factors with funko specifically like we're we're in a position where we're not totally sure if how much we're going to continue collecting Funko stuff and Funko as a company is in a really interesting position right now. That's like a whole other conversation. So it was, it was just an appropriate thing to, you know, to kind of let go of. And I was like, yeah, we need a little bit more space mm -hmm. in our storage unit and this would free up a good chunk of space. And, you know, so that was kind of the move we made, you know, with dolls. I mean, because we are such dedicated and such passionate, like doll collectors, like there are certain things I don't know if I could imagine myself like ever letting go of maybe like in my will, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but, but like, yeah, with things you're super attached to like monster high, ever after high and I mean granted never say never um it's kind of interesting I'm, I'm curious like how many collectors do have like those little things where it's like if I ever had to like mm -hmm. if I had no choice but to downsize a given collection you're like the, the ones you kind of like have in mind you're like oh well yeah those ones if I really had to those would be the first to go you know like for me with my rainbow high collection it may or may not be the juniors in the cheer line yeah and you know but, I think Matt <laughs> is better about uh, getting rid of IT dolls that he w doesn't want. I mean, there's been, you know, conventions where we receive dolls that, you know, aren't, we don't really love. And so yeah. we can, you know, sell to a collector who, who would enjoy it. And yeah. I think the W Club forums is a great area for that. Um, you know, you know that it will go to a collector or someone who would mm -hmm. value the doll. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing too, is if you're in a position where you feel like you want to sell something or, or like a chunk of things from your collection it, of course there's a variety of factors it's like what what it is you're selling who the appropriate audience would be how much money are you looking to make are you really trying to like get rid of something you know at an affordable price to someone who will really love it or are you like you're trying to get some money back because you've already invested so much money you know in this product or in your collection um so it really varies but of course there's all there's the common you know platforms and apps that people use obviously like ebay um offer up and mercari are good for you know local meetup if you'd rather you know sell it to someone in person obviously make sure to be safe when you do things like that take someone with you you know if you've never done something like that before um but you know it's i don't know it is just also very i think collectors like i said they there's so much emotional attachment you know behind um like i mean in, in in certain aspects it can be really 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 upsetting to feel like if you feel like you have to give up something you're not ready to give up and of course i would say if you really feel like you don't want to give something up um as a collector at least from my personal experience is like then you do what you have to do or you do your best 
to hang on to it and to make space for it, you know? And of course, it, I mean, it's funny too, because as a collector, I feel like a lot of times we're like, regardless of space or whatever, you're like, if I love something enough, I will make space for, <laughs> for it. But- Something else has to go. Yeah, but something else has to go. I mean, that's kind of, yeah. I mean, for me too, it's, you do kind of start having a sense of prioritization at a certain point. I mean, whether, even if, whether it's like new things you're buying or old things you're kind of cycling out. Um, I'm kind of in a little bit of a period right now where I'm kind of phasing out of some of like my playline Barbies, um, some of like my my Barbie fashionistas and stuff like that. Um, you know, Barbie obviously was, you know, a huge gateway for me into collecting and when I was much younger, but personally as an adult collector, I haven't had an enormous connection to the Barbie brand. So, you know, you kind of just get to a point where you kind of just weigh your options and the pros and cons and, you know, what do you want to do with what you have? Do you want to try to, you know, hang on to something? Do you want to, I don't know. I feel like the average collector doesn't enjoy thinking too far into the future, mm -hmm. which I can't blame you. It's just that sense that's, you know, it just, it's, it can be scary, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I would definitely be curious what y'all's experiences have been, um, you know, with storage, with, display with, you know, if you ever had to let go of, you know, your collection or a chunk of your collection, how that was for you. Was it really hard for you? Was it upsetting? Um, or did it, or did it feel good? Did it feel liberating? Um, you know, do you have any tips or tricks for kind of how to make the most of the space you have? Um, yeah, I would love to hear what you guys, what camp you fall under. Do you like to display everything you own or do you like to have kind of like a spot for the things that you're currently interested in. Um, do you unbox your dolls or do you keep some in boxes? Do they have more sentimental value if you play with them or or if they if they store better in box? Do you buy duplicates? I feel like that's a uh, topic that duplicates. collectors <laughs> yeah. don't really talk about. Like, do you guys have duplicates yeah. because you love something so much that you want one in box? Yeah, duplicates are a huge thing for some collectors and understandably so i mean if you really really like something sometimes you're like i want one in box and i want one out of box and i want one to restyle and i want one to repaint and you know i personally am not really the type of collector who does too much with duplicates most of the time i mean i have a couple but yeah it's yeah when you buy duplicates it takes even more space so yes, yes. yeah and that's why i i would probably be more comfortable getting rid of slash skipping uh, you know a duplicate versus something brand new yeah so thank you for joining us for this conversation it was you know a fun one to have uh yeah like we said we're definitely very curious how you guys feel about this subject you know is it a subject you just don't even want to think about you just don't like talking about it it's can be again it can be very challenging and very complex we know but hopefully some of you guys can relate to some of the things we shared. Um, and we'd love to chat with you about it further, um, you know, in the comments. Yeah. And if you would like a tour of Sang's room, so it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, but yeah, if you want like a modest, small collection viewing tour, um, that's something I can probably do in the near future. But it's not going to be a museum. It's not going to no. be everything I ever own in my life. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, you know, a lot, there's a lot of sentimental things in there. Yeah. Like we said, Sang and I are both working with like restricted space. So like we're, you know, we're doing the best we can with what we've got. If we ever win the lottery and become gajillionaires, you know, we'll be sure to deck out our mansion mm -hmm. as, as we would like to, but would love to hear again, what you guys have to say about this. Uh, let us know what you would like discussed in our next discussion video or podcast. And thank you again for joining us for this conversation. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.